Hey, welcome guys. I'm gonna be talking about my Steam library today, which has 55 games apparently, but I think I just haven't started most of them. Or I don't care about some of them. I forgot what happened. But apparently my library has 55 games, but I've only like played or messed around with 39-ish of them. And some of them not very much. Alright, so let me talk about the first game. The first game is a Yuri visual novel called A Kiss for the Petals. I've only played about an hour of it so far. But I feel like with visual novels, even if I've only played very little, I feel like I could talk about them to some extent because with visual novels, I've noticed they're kind of consistent. So, like, if the first hour is really good, the entire visual novel is probably going to be really good. And if the first hour is kind of bland, it, the visual novel is usually going to stay bland. I feel like with visual novels, there's not a lot of, like, highs and lows, you know what I mean? It's like a plateau of either good or just really poor. So, with A Kiss for the Petals, I'm about an hour in. And it's a visual novel that focuses on the relationship of the characters rather than building up to the relationship and they give you a little bit of background story of how they first met in the beginning and it's definitely interesting we get to it's from told from the perspective of the character with like the pinkish hair and not the character with the black hair so far i have the sense that it is gonna be cute i think i also heard that it's very short like maybe four hours or so but based on what I've played so far, the narrative was, like, pretty engaging. I wasn't disinterested in it. I'm gonna give this, like, a strong B. I don't have any B pluses or anything, unfortunately, but this is, like, a strong B right here. The next game on the list is called Ace of Seafood. If I remember correctly, I was swimming around as a fish and, like, shooting at other fish. It was a game that I got on sale really cheap. It was about 3 bucks when I bought it. I think the normal price is like $12. And my friend Slep rep recommended it to me. It gave off the feeling in a way like that it's the type of game that you would find in an arcade, like an arcade machine. It's also the type of game that is humorous. But I don't know if like the gameplay is something that I could take seriously. I would think I was trying to play it with a PS4 controller and... Something about it wasn't hitting right, or maybe I did use a mouse and keyboard and I just couldn't handle it. I don't know. Something about the controls for me felt kind of funky. It was definitely a good experience to have at least once. But it's not the type of thing that I would, you know, stick with. It was like a one-time thing, so this is a D tier. My next game on the list is a fighting game called Blade Arcus. Blade Arcus, I did not play the story for it, so I can't speak to the story for it. Most fighting games don't tend to have the strongest story anyway, but some of them do try to give some, a little bit of an interesting story. I think Dead or Alive has a really fascinating story, especially if you read about it on like Wikipedia or listen to some YouTube videos. Skullgirls also seem to have an interesting premise, although I didn't finish the story. But what I can say about Blade Arcus is that it has 16 characters. And one of the characters I actually recognize from another game that I play, Sonya from Shining Resonance Refrain, which was an RPG on PS4. And I think it was also originally an RPG on a much older console. So I'm not sure if, like, this is a fighting game that pulls in characters from multiple series, or if it's just, like, maybe her and a few others that are like that, and it's mostly original characters. But I think it's very fun. I think the gameplay, the fighting mechanics are enjoyable. I'm not the biggest 2D fighting game fan. It's mostly just Skullgirls, Blade Arcus, and maybe Blaze Blue Cross Tag. I tend to prefer 3D fighting games like Soul Calibur 6 and Dead or Alive. But I would give Blade Arcus like an A tier. Like if a friend wanted to play a fighting game, this is the type of fighting game that I would want to play if they have it or are willing to try it. It usually goes on sale for less than 8 bucks, but the normal price is 30 bucks. But yeah, pretty good game. Alright, my next game that I have here is Cave Story. I tried to stream Cave Story on Discord a long time ago, and it wasn't really working out. Like, first I think I had controller issues, then I got past that, I figured out how to set it up. 
And then the problem was that for some reason, whenever I would stream to Discord, the actual game screen kind of got a piece of it cut off, like the bottom piece. So sometimes I couldn't see where I was going with my character. That might have been like a issue of compatibility with Cave Story and Discord. Maybe if I tried to Twitch stream it, it'd be more smooth. But because of that issue, I only played about two hours worth of the game. But from what I played, it was very fun. Definitely a good experience. Uh, I don't remember. I think there was a little bit of dialogue, but not much. But it was more so about like side scrolling exploration. Shooting up enemies, maybe a little bit of platforming, that type of thing. I think there was a puzzle at one point that I'm not sure how I solved, if I solved it. But definitely a good game. From my general impressions of the game, I would say it's A tier. My next game is Cthulhu Saves the World. It's an RPG. I think I got it on sale for like less than a dollar. The plot is that Cthulhu, who is a monster dude with like a tentacle face... He is a villain trying to destroy the world, and some heroes seal away his power. So he needs to go on a quest to become a true hero in order to regain his power. So it's a little bit ironic. The narrative is very funny. The character dialogue is pretty funny. Uh, typical turn-based RPG exploration and dungeons, unlocking treasure chests. Using magic, you get a party of... I think there were three characters that I had. I don't know if there's more. The first one is a female character that ends up falling in love with him. That's also very funny. But, yeah. As far as RPGs go, I think it's definitely well made. I think it could definitely be a lot of fun. For me, personally, it's more of a... Play it for laughs rather than take it seriously RPG. So I can't give it the highest rating, but I, I would say it's like A tier from what I've played of it. Because it's a game that I haven't finished, but it was definitely fun. The next one is Footsies, which I play a lot with Sushi and a little bit with Pepsis. So Footsies is a $4 fighting game with what I consider to be almost stick figure like characters, but Sushi calls them blobs. It's a really good game that focuses mostly on kicking your opponents, which is why it's called Footsies. A lot of, like, Sanji from One Piece stuff going on here. However, there are some attack moves, like the Shoryuken which, or Uppercut, which do use the hands. So, it's not entirely Footsies based as they would have you believe. The one con of this game is that there's, like, absolutely no online activity. If you wanted to play with strangers and fight against them, there's almost no one online whenever we've tried to do that. The positives is the arcade mode is very fun. You could get a lot of practice fighting these arcade mode opponents who tend to have very specific, like, fighting styles. The first one just spams moves a lot. The second one blocks a lot. And it really forces you to figure out how to get around those challenges, those obstacles. And it will make you a better fighter when you play against your friends. I had a lot of fun playing with my friends. We've played it at some times for over an hour. And the matches are very short, which means we've done lots of matches in one sitting, like over 40. My friends are very competitive when it comes to the game. Even if I keep winning, they don't want to give up, which I admire. Like I said... On sale, it was like 3 bucks. I think the regular price is $4, so it's very affordable. And I heard that a lot of, like, fighting game tournament players, like, people who play fighting games seriously and competitively use this for, like, training, because it really gets them to focus on, like, the fundamentals, I suppose. So definitely a good game all around. I would give it an S tier just because I find it to be very fun to play with friends, like... If somebody was like, hey, Cloud, do you want to do a game night? I would throw this out there as a potential game that we could play. Footsies is very mechanically strong. Okay, you heard that, guys. Pepsi says Footsies is mechanically strong. Another positive point. Thank you for saying that, Pepsi. <laughs> okay, guys. So the next one is Garfield Kart. I got to play Garfield Kart on stream for about 15 minutes tops. 
first of all, I couldn't figure out how to get my PS4 controller to work with the game, so I was trying to keyboard and mouse. And I think I was doing very, very poorly with keyboard and mouse, but I was still enjoying my time with the struggle, you know? Trying to see if I could at least get fifth place instead of last. Um, I think the courses seemed cute, you know? There's a interesting cast of characters. I do know that one of my friends uh, asked about the uh, frame rate. <laughs> I can't tell if it was a joke. The game did feel a little bit like slow at times, but I don't know. I don't know why that was. Uh, and I think it crashed on me at one point. I think that's why I ended up switching to a different game during that stream. So, I don't know. It's, it's a game that feels like it has potential, but it might be better on a different platform or something. Because I do believe they also have it on consoles. Or maybe a different Garfield cart on consoles. So, good for the laughs, but I'm going to give it a D tier. Alright, our next game is Guilty Gear Accent Core XX something. It was on sale recently for like $3 and my friend Sushi wanted me to get it so we can fight against each other. Uh, the first time I played a Guilty Gear game, I think I played on PlayStation 4 and I wasn't thrilled with the experience because the characters felt very slow and sluggish to me. But when I was playing against Sushi, I tried, I think, three different characters that day. And it felt much smoother, this game. And it was definitely fun. That day, Sushi had to go somewhat early, so we didn't get to continue playing. But it's definitely a game that I would continue playing with people and would give another shot. I would give this fighting game a... Hmm... Hmm... And give it a strong B tier. So far, both of my B tiers are strong B tiers. Alright, our next game is Guru Mean. It's made by the same people who made Yeast and Trails in the Sky and Trails of Cold Steel. I've played it for about like 15 or 20 minutes so far because I only played it because I wanted to see if it worked since some of the games that I purchased recently didn't seem to work and start up well. From the 20 minutes that I played, I gotta say, I'm not, like, 100% in love with the main character. Like, her personality or dialogue doesn't really seem interesting or engaging for me. But I have seen trailers and things of the gameplay, and the gameplay does look very fun. And the plot itself seems interesting. Like, I do have some questions, and I want to see where this is all going. Like, right now, she ended up in a village with monsters. And the only reason she could see the monsters is because she's a child. But adult humans can't really see them, for the most part. There was also a dog who was able to see one of the monsters, so dogs and animals can see them. But, yeah, like, the character herself, not too interesting. But the plot and gameplay do seem very good. So, based off of initial impressions, this is I'll give this an A tier. Plus, like I said, it's made by the people who made Trails and Yeast, and those games are like S tier, so I'm sure Gurumin is phenomenal. Our next game on the list is A Hat in Time. So, A Hat in Time is about a girl who needs to collect hourglasses to power up her gummy ship, because the hourglasses seem to serve as fuel for some reason. Otherwise, she'll never reach Kingdom Hearts. The game itself reminds me and a lot of other people about Super Mario Sunshine in terms of like the platforming and the game mechanics and it's basically you're collecting hourglasses instead of stars, right? The game's cute, it's very fun, it's very brief. I think the game lasted me about 8 to 10 hours. In Mario Sunshine, I think you could collect up to 120 stars and this game I think there are only roughly 30 or fewer than 30 hourglasses. I didn't collect them all, I only collected what I needed. But it was definitely on the shorter end, but still fun. F boss fights were somewhat challenging depending on the boss. I know there was one that was like, absolutely slaughtering me. For some reason, the one that was slaughtering me was more challenging than the final boss. But anyway, good game. The only thing I will say is, I think this game would be higher on my tier maker if I played it as a child. 
because it's the type of game that I think would appeal more to children. I'm not saying it can't appeal to adults. A lot of adults have said very great things about this game. But for me personally, playing as an adult, it didn't have the same magic that it would have if I was playing it when I was younger. So although it was fun, I think it was like strong B tier for me. I think other people might give it like an A or an S, but for me, strong B tier. Alright guys, our next game is Helltaker. Helltaker, I think a lot of people are familiar with the soundtrack. It has some good beats. It has some waifu characters that I've noticed a lot of people simp for. Personally, I, I'm not like simping any of the Helltaker waifus myself, but to each their own. It has an excellent set of challenging puzzles. I usually struggle with puzzles. I know there was one that I was definitely stuck on in the main game, but I still had a lot of fun. I'm also not the biggest fan of keyboarding, and I was keyboarding while playing it, but still had a good time, even with the final boss. They recently added seven levels to the game that you have to go to chapter select for in the main game, and then go to exam taker. So for those who haven't tried that out, there are seven new levels that are more challenging than the original set of levels. Overall, short game, free game, fun game, I think I would give it an S tier. Like, if more people made games like this, I would definitely want to try out those games. Brum says, my opinion for Helltaker to Lores is straightforward. Characters are unique. Gameplay is fun. It has a big cult following that's huge. <laughs> Rule 34, massive, wow. Alright guys, I'm going to talk about the next game. The next game is Highway Blossoms, another Yuri visual novel. So it focuses on basically they're hunting for treasure because a journal of a gold rush miner was found. So a lot of people in America are scrambling to find whatever treasure this gold rush miner hid. And the blonde is the one looking for treasure and then she ropes in the short haired blue brunette who isn't even, like, a long-time friend of hers or anything. It's, like, someone that she basically just met. To be honest, I think the story focuses more so on the treasure hunt than the romance blossoming, and the whole treasure hunting thing isn't as interesting to me. And I'm not saying that the romance has to, like, hurry up and get to anything too intense, like kissing or anything, but I feel like it is lacking in those seemingly like romantic build-up moments i think in a sense it's maybe a little bit more of a realistic romance in a way because like in real life you might meet someone and you're not going to be interested in them right away right usually you're going to be interested in them like if you're interested in their personality if like certain intimate like not moments happen with them like you start to share like a deeper connection or you start bonding more so i guess like maybe they just need more times to bond because i haven't really finished it i'm about halfway through and i, I do think that the romance so far has been kind of weak but it is a very positively rated game and there is a sequel to the game as well so it must have definitely been well received I do think that the characters themselves are interesting. I do want to see how the story turns out more. But yeah, the whole Gold Rush thing doesn't appeal to me. I wish they could have told this story through a different lens. But I'll give it a strong B tier. Up there with a kiss for the pedals. Uh, my next game here is... If My Heart Had Wings. This is another dating sim type game, a visual novel that I've only played for about an hour. So far, I've heard great things about it. I think most people who talk about it want to give it like an S tier. It's definitely like people who played it rave about it. They, you know, they really urge you to give it a shot. Uh, it was on sale when I got it for about $4. One of my IRL friends recommended it. And some of my online friends also recommended it. So far, it hasn't hit for me. I don't know if it'll get better later on. But like I said, usually I think things stay pretty consistent with visual novels. So I don't know if it'll really grip me at any point. Potentially so, but 
We'll see. As of right now, I'd say it's C tier for me. I'm not, like, very eager to continue. Like, if I had a choice, I'd rather continue with other games that I'm playing. Alright, the next game is The Last of Waifus. It's part of a series called that has games like H Sniper. Um, I wasn't a big fan of this series. The games were less than a dollar, and they seemed to have a funny premise, which is why I tried them out. One of the games felt really, like, bugged and rigged in favor of the gamer, the player. It was the Sniper Middle East game, because for some reason I was able to kill the enemies, but they weren't able to reach me with their shots, so I was taking no damage. And I was I just kept killing them and killing them, and there's no end to it, because there's no, like, winning the game, it seems, so... I don't know, I don't... These are games that you play if you want to have some laughs or buy some funny content, but it's not a game that you play if you want a story or, you know, to take it seriously. So I'm going to say D tier. The next game is Little Witch No Better. This is pretty much Lolly Dark Souls. Uh, one of the problems, because, you know, a lot of people say good things about this game, so I will say first that one problem with this game is that it's very easy to grind, and you can grind very quickly, and you can become very overpowered by grinding. Because I noticed that there was a boss that I was stuck at, the third boss, because she kept breaking the platform that I was standing on, and I would drown in lava. So I said to myself, if I grind and become stronger, maybe I could defeat her before she breaks the platform. So I grinded up and maxed out like all of my stats in about an hour or less, which is a little bit too fast for maxing things out. And it made me incredibly OP, and considering that this is like a Dark Souls-like game, I don't think OP is something that you want. So I think that's a, a bad thing in a sense. And I ended up having to not even be OP to fight that boss. What I did was, I ended up using the MP restoration items, that way I could get my magic back and I wouldn't need to waste time recharging. And that's how I beat the boss in time before she broke my platform. But other than that one con that it's easy to become OP, like, the graphics are great, the gameplay is really fun, the little bit of story that you get seems very interesting. Another good thing about it is that it is going to come out on PS4 and Switch. They are going to release it on consoles at some point. That was the most recent news. It's an early access game. For 10 bucks. you get about maybe 4 or a little bit over 4 hours worth of content. And it's very promising, very fun for sure. So yeah, I recommend playing it. Lolly Dark Souls, very fun game. I enjoyed streaming it. I would like to stream the full game when it fully releases. I'm going to say S tier. S tier for me. Our next game is another one that Sluppy recommended to me. Called Martian Forest. But we call it Lolly Forest. Because you play as a lolly and you're running around a forest. I played this game for about two hours. And that's a lot considering that I think it's only about a six hour game tops. It's a very short game. It's basically, you're like collecting items, looking for items in the forest. You gotta figure out what to do with that item, what character to give it to, in order to continue to get new items so you can move further along the forest path and, you know, just get things done and unlock further content. It kind of also gives off Atelier vibes because you're doing alchemy and at some points you can like synthesize things. But it's definitely very different gameplay wise from Atelier. If it, it sounds interesting to you, I recommend looking up a trailer first to figure out if it may or may not be for you. It's a very cheap game. I think I got it for 10 bucks or so. Don't remember if it was a sale or not. I think it was 10 bucks, and then on sale it's 5 bucks if I remember correctly. But it's definitely very cute. If you like cute short games, it might be the game for you. Overall, like, I can't say it was a poorly made game or anything or that I hated it. It was fun for the time that I played it. I would give it like a regular B. Not a strong or a weak B, but it's a B tier. Alright guys, our next game is Monster Prom. You pick one of six characters, I believe it was 
three guys and three girls. And you have about, I think it was seven days to sort of hang out around school, talk to the person you like, try to build up rapport and a good relationship with them, and eventually get asked to prom. If you're playing single player, I think the game takes about an hour. If you're playing uh, with multiple characters because you are streaming it to friends and you want to let them make choices as well, then it'll be about an hour per person more or less. So, yeah, that's how it works out. There are different settings that you could go to, like the library or the gymnasium, I believe, to interact with characters of your choosing. And it will influence certain stats like charm or wealth or maybe courage or luck and those stats will influence whether the person you're aiming for ends up asking you out or not it seems it is a fun game but to be honest i think it's the type of game that's fun if you're playing with at least one other person that way you can also laugh at the choices that they make and also see if they're successful in their pursuit I don't think it's the type of game that I would play solo, even though it's definitely very funny. But I think that's another reason why it's fun to play it with someone else. That way you could hear your friends laughing when funny scenes happen, or you can make jokes and have your friends laugh. So I think it's better as a co-op experience. But overall, I would say it's a strong B for me. Again, mostly because it's something that I wouldn't really care to play solo, but it is enjoyable with other people. The next game on our list is First Date RPG. Even though it's called RPG, it feels a lot like a visual novel because there's very little walking around and you're mostly reading dialogue. The female character at the moment, it's an early access game that costs a dollar. So the female character at the moment has... Four chapters, I believe, and the male character has three chapters. It seems like each character is supposed to get at least five chapters, so there's definitely some unfinished content. Each chapter itself lasts about 10 minutes, so the girl's story at the moment is about 40 minutes of content, and the guy's story is about half hour of content. I have streamed it all on Discord so far with friends. And also on Twitch, we've had a lot of laughs. I have a YouTube video of it posted on YouTube. Um, I think it's a fun game. We don't like the male character because he's very lacking in confidence and charm. So I know I made fun of him a lot, and I think chat agreed with me for the most part that he was just... It was hard to root for him, man, you know, to say the least. The female character seems normal enough, not too exciting. She wants to be a model. The guy wants to do something with cars because he likes cars. Maybe be a car mechanic. You know, so we'll, we'll see how the story develops. In terms of, like, using it as stream content and having friends around as you play it, I think it's an S-tier game. I think it's great to share with people. In terms of giving it a more realistic rating, I think it's an interesting concept. I think it's definitely fun to see what they're doing with it. So it might be like B tier. So I'm going to throw it in the middle and give it like a weak A tier. Because I like to see what's going on. It's something different. And usually I like things that are a little bit different. They kind of break from the mold, you know what I mean? So for me, it's an interesting story to watch okay the next game on our tier maker is mysteria occult shadows i talked about this recently with pepsi and he couldn't remember what the game was but i streamed this on twitch like two or three times i think at the start of the year um the story i can't really tell you much it's because i don't remember much mostly because this is a big con of the game the English translation wasn't done very well, so it's hard to follow what's happening in the story because of the poor translation. There was even a part of the game that I think was untranslated that I saw like some kanji characters and I was like, what the heck is this? Like, I don't know what to do now, but 
I can't say much about the story because of the translation, but it's basically your typical story of, like, darkness spreading across the land, and, you know, we gotta stop the darkness, yada yada. The main characters are animal girls, so there are cat girls, bunny girls, etc. The gameplay feels very like Devil May Cry, it's hack and slash. I think the gameplay is very fun. I do enjoy the game, I just wish that I understood the story. Uh, the game cost me about 12 bucks, and I think I played it for about 8 hours before I got stuck, possibly because of the lack of translation. But definitely a very good promising game. I wish that they had maybe a bigger budget to develop the game more, or even release it on console, because I think it had a lot of promise. You know, any game that's kind of like Devil May Cry in terms of gameplay... You could tell it's going to be fun. And the art is very cute during the loading screens. Like the 2D art of like the cat girl and bunny girl characters is absolutely beautiful. And it's not just the characters themselves, but all of the background detail is freaking amazing. So yeah, if you like Devil May Cry and you don't mind like a poor translation, you just want to focus on like some gameplay. Since it's a relatively cheap game... I would recommend it if you if anyone was interested in trying it. Um, I'm going to give it a strong B tier. I think if the translation would have been better, I would have given it an A tier for sure. Or possibly even an S tier. Who knows? I think maybe just A. Because the story does seem like it's a little bit generic, maybe. But definitely, you know, not a bad game. Not a bad game, but needs improvement. Alright, our next game is One Piece Burning Blood. In terms of story, it does not have an original story. It focuses on the Marine Ford arc from the anime and manga. You can play as different characters for story mode. So it has Luffy, it has Ace. I believe it had Whitebeard and Akainu, the Navy Admiral. So... Yeah, it's a very short story. I think the game took about four hours, so one hour -ish for each story mode. And the two, it has like 3D graphics. I think the combat is very fun. The only problem is that you have to play story mode, at least Luffy's story, before you can unlock multiplayer. So I wanted to play with some friends, but they never got around to doing much story wise, so they didn't really have the opportunity to do that but the gameplay is very fun i got it very cheap on steam for about eight bucks i also bought a physical copy for playstation 4 for about 10 bucks it's a very cheap game fun but if you're looking for an original story it's not the place to go but overall in terms of like fighting gameplay i think i would give it an a tier our next game is overcooked 2 I threw this in here even though I got it on Epic and not Steam. But I played this for about two or three hours with some friends and they were streaming it. And to be honest, I don't think it's the type of game that would be fun solo. I think you can play it solo and I think I even saw someone play it solo. But it's the type of game that you definitely want to play with at least one friend. We played in a group of four and... It was funny, we were having, I think, some trouble coordinating things. I was trying to focus mostly on, like, washing dishes and maybe cutting things and doing, like, the preparation rather than the actual cooking, like, taking things off the stove so it wouldn't burn. I was, like, the assistant chef in a sense. And my friends were focusing more so on, like, being the actual chef and, like, doing the deliveries. But every now and then I would do those things as well. I think it was a fun game. I had a lot of fun playing with my friends, for sure. Um, if it's a type of game that you want to play with people, I would give it at least an A tier. So the next game on my list is Panty Party, which was a $10 game that I got on sale for about $3.50 at one point. It has a story mode that has about 20 levels. It has an arcade mode and a few other, you know... Categories, maybe training, I don't know. The story mode, I don't remember much of because I was streaming it on Discord and I was focusing more so on the gameplay, talking to people who joined the stream, 
Um, and just like making jokes and making fun of the game in general. It's definitely a very polished game. It doesn't feel like something that they cheaped out on. It was fun. I definitely enjoyed making jokes and making people laugh and having a good time with it. There are different types of panties, like the bow one, Shima pan, etc. They each have their own unique attacks and abilities, including ultimate attacks that require charging. And different types of like lasers and sometimes swords and this and that. Overall, I think it was an S-tier game. It's something that I would consider streaming again. I did also try to stream the arcade mode again, but... You know, I think, like, games like this that are, like, funny, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they have a comedic nature, are very good. Now, the next two are Jigsaw puzzle games that cost less than a dollar each, called Pretty Angel and Pretty Neko. The game will last you about maybe like 15 minutes or more or less, depending on how good you are with Jigsaw puzzles. I think each game had about 6 to 8 puzzles. The amazing thing about these games is that they cost less than a dollar, and the freaking artwork for these Jigsaw puzzles is phenomenal. So you figure they would charge more, because it's like, how are these artists getting paid? But the game, the puzzles start off very easy. I think the early ones have like 9 pieces or so. And then, as you continue, there are more pieces to move around and work with. Um, very fun. I think people enjoyed watching me stream them. Just for, like, the laughs of it all. Because it was something different and peculiar, unique. And I think, you know, for the price, since it was less than a dollar, it's a good value for what you're getting. I'll give it an 8, an S tier, just because, you know... Excellent art jigsaw puzzle. Like, what more can you expect from a jigsaw puzzle? Like, it's hard to rate a jigsaw puzzle poorly because you know what you're getting. The next game is Reseteer, which is like a tellier in the sense that you can explore in a dungeons and gather materials, but it's different from a tellier in the sense that. You are not, like, doing alchemy, but rather you're bringing back the materials that you either purchase or find in the dungeon, and you're putting them in your shop to sell them and make profit. And the reason the main character is named the Reset is trying to sell these goods is because her father left her with a massive debt, and now this fairy named Tyr is, like... Basically forcing her into labor, unfortunately, or else there will be some consequences. It is possible to not make payments in time and have, like, a early ending, bad ending to the game. So you really have to stay on top of your toes. Make sure you're managing your business well. There are ways to make the customers happy by offering them good prices. And there are ways to make them unhappy by not having the right goods or trying to overcharge too much. I think it's a very fun game, the type of game that even if you fail, you want to try again. I think it has replay value. I think it's cute, definitely relaxing. I think the dialogue and the story could be a little bit stronger for me because, like I said, I compared it to Atelier. And a lot of the Atelier games, like the Dusk Trilogy... And the Arlen trilogy have a lot of like similar elements, but much more interesting characters and story. So it's not a perfect game, but I think it's still an A tier game. It's definitely got some good reviews and some fun gameplay for sure. All right, our next game is Sayonara Umihara Kawase. I played it for about 15 minutes on stream. I wasn't doing well. The mechanics were a struggle for me for some reason. And I ended up just refunding the game because I wasn't feeling it. As you can probably see on the cover, it has a big Opai character. She's got a fishing rod that she uses to like fight and swing around, use to get past obstacles. It seemed interesting, and it's a whole franchise. They have more than one game, but it just wasn't for me. So I'm going to say D tier. It's a platformer, so anyone who likes platforming... Maybe look up a trailer, see if you want to give it a shot. Pepsi says it does have tricky mechanics. Have you tried it, Pepsi? Have you played these before? 
Our next one is Skullgirls, which is on PS4, Steam, Switch. Uh, one of my friends likes it on PC because no matter where you are in the world, you could be playing with someone across the continents, and the gameplay will still be smooth, not laggy. It has a pretty good cast of characters. I forget how many, but let's say in the ballpark of like 16 to 20. It's a game that I have to improve in. I think there are like maybe two or three characters I do decent enough with. Um, it's a lot of fun. I've played it with some of my friends for anywhere between two to three hours in some cases. We've done a tournament for it in the Discord. I would like to someday hopefully do another tournament with it if people are interested because I do think it's a good game. Uh, the story seemed promising. It was hard for me to focus on the story at the time that I tried to do story mode. But it, I think it has an interesting premise that I don't remember too well, unfortunately. But I know they mentioned like the heart and things going on with that. So, smooth fighting. Good cast of characters. Interesting story premise. Definitely a good 2D fighter. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of 2D fighters, but this is a good one. So I'll give it an S tier. I think that this was a superbly well done game. Our next game is Super Animal Royale. I've played it once with some friends of mine. One of them was streaming it. Uh, full disclaimer, I had a lot of trouble with this game. Tech issues. Because they're supposed to like launch you out of a ship. And then you could kind of like parachute to wherever you want to land away from enemies so you could gather resources and weapons before fighting the enemy players. But I had trouble because for some reason it wouldn't like take me out of the waiting room and launch me out of the ship and into battle. But I'm not going to let that affect my judgment of the game. So when I raid the game, I'm not going to take that into account. But... One thing I really liked about the game was the music that played during the waiting menu. Don't ask why. I don't know. I found it very catchy. I thought it was a nice, light, almost playful tune. It has a lot of different characters. I was playing as a fox, I think, and some of my friends were like other different animals or designs. Um, overall, to be honest, from what I did get to do with the gameplay... It's not the type of game that I would want to replay or that I had much interest in. I think it was definitely cute. And I think it's like... For me, it's the type of game that I would just like fool around in and mess around. Like almost maybe troll, to be perfectly honest. Something about it, it's like hard to take seriously. Like when I play other games like Overwatch, like I have fun and I'm relaxed. But I also feel like it brings out this competitive nature. Whereas with Super Animal Royale... For some reason, I don't care to be competitive, so it doesn't bring that competitive side out of me. And I think that's like a shortcoming, because I'm pretty sure for other people it would bring out that competitive side, but for me, there's something about it that's just not enticing enough for me to care if I win or lose. And I take that in a negative way, in a sense, because I feel like it should. So it's just the type of game that I would derp around in. So I'll give it like a C tier. I thought it had promise, it was cute, but it just wasn't for me personally. Alright, our next game is an early access game that I got for about 5 bucks, but I believe the full non-sale price is 10 bucks. It's called Super Drink Brothers. It is a fighting game where so far there is no story mode. Uh, me and my friends had difficulty with online mode because the lobby we were trying to set up just was in constant load and it wouldn't get set up. So from what it seems like, the only thing you could do right now in Super Drink Brothers is play against online strangers and rank up or do training mode. It is a very fun game. It has about 16 characters. They are very different. You got your Coca-Cola can. Your Pepsi can. There's one that's a bowl of curry rice. There's one that looks like Darth Vader. It's definitely a very diverse set of fighters to choose from. They all have their own abilities, fighting styles. Some focus more so on speed with weaker attack. Some more so on strong attack but slower speeds. It is a lot of fun. I enjoyed streaming it. 
Um, I would like to be able to someday play with friends. During the loading screens, they give bits of lore here and there. So I remember they said one of the characters was like a spy, I believe, from the Hot Dog Kingdom. So... I, I believe they're going to add a story mode since they do hint at a lot of lore. And it seems like it's going to be a very funny and engaging story. I think the game has a lot of promise. Because of the issues with online play with friends and the fact that there's no story right now, I can't really quite give it an S tier. But from the gameplay that I've done so far and from the fact that it is very funny and promising, I think it's an A tier game. Alright, let me talk about the next game. Our next game is Sword Necromancer. It's like a it's it's a roguelike game. So it's a roguelike running around the dungeon fighting monsters. If you die, you start all over again. The dungeon layout changes. I wanna say it's also RPG, but you know, I think a lot of people think RPG and they think turn based and they think plot heavy, and this definitely isn't turn based or plot heavy. But it's an interesting game. I think that if you are a roguelike fan, you might really enjoy this. Me, personally, I don't play a lot of roguelike games, so I thought it was fun, interesting, but it's not something I would play often, and I'm not too worried about whether or not I beat the game. I got it for free because a friend supported their Kickstarter, so he got a free copy plus a code to provide a friend, so he gave me the code. I think I would give it a B tier, just to be, like, fair. Somebody who likes roguelikes might rate it higher. Uh, but for me, it's, like, definitely good gameplay. It is fun. I can't say that it's not fun, but it's not, like, my type of thing to a strong degree. So a weak B tier sounds about right. Our next game is Tabletop Simulator. Not much to say about this, because it's obviously not a story mode game. But it's a game that's on Steam for $20. You can get it on sale often for $10. It comes with various games like chess, checkers, what have you, already in installed. And there's also a Steam workshop where you can download a lot of different card games and board games that other people have created. That are almost, almost like DLC for the game, I suppose you could say. And the thing about this is that it feels like you could get almost any board game or card game because of all the workshop mods. So it's like, for $10, you can have any board game or card game and play with friends online. You don't have to worry about them coming over if they live far away or because of the pandemic. And you could just, you know, chill and have a good time with friends. So I think it's a great value for the price, which is why I'm going to give it an S tier. Our next game is Titanfall 2. It's a first-person shooter game. I have it on Steam. My father has it on PlayStation 4. My dad's a big fan of it because um, he likes FPS games a lot. He used to be a big Call of Duty fan and just play those nonstop. And then when he found out about Titanfall, he started playing that nonstop. And now he kind of switches between the two, but he leans towards Titanfall 2. So you run around, you do your typical FPS shooter stuff. But it also has these giant robots that you can eventually summon once the god charges and you could fight in the robots. For me personally, I don't like using the robot. I feel like they kill me very easily. I feel like I do better on foot. Um, but for a lot of people, being able to get into a mech is a large part of the appeal. I think that in terms of first person shooter games, it's definitely the gameplay well done. It's very fun. I think that the mechs, even though I don't like them, definitely adds something unique and exciting. So I would say it's an S-tier game. I haven't played it much, to be honest. I play a lot more Overwatch and, like, Modern Warfare and all that, but definitely a fun game. Our next game is The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky 3. The Legend of Heroes games usually focus around a character named Estelle Bright. And her journey as a bracer, which a bracer is basically like a professional, I, I don't want to say mercenary, but it's kind of like a private army, I suppose, that doesn't necessarily work under the government. And they can do anything from fighting criminals or even helping people with everyday tasks like acquiring goods 
or maybe even teaching kids at Sunday school. And it's a turn-based RPG series. They have games on PSP, PS Vita, and Steam. It also ties in to other games such as Trails of Cold Steel, Trails of Zero, and Trails of Azure in terms of the overall plot plot progression and world building. And it gives you a lot of insight into like the world's politics and the schemes that are happening with different criminal groups. The characters have a lot of character development. At first, they often seem tropey, but they develop well enough to become very complex and interesting. I absolutely love the soundtracks for all of the Trails games. The freaking OSTs are a bop. The enemies, the villains, are very interesting. In some games, a lot of them often win fights, which makes them easily perceivable as a big threat. Uh, A lot of waifu characters. I'm planning to do a Trails waifu tier maker stream with a friend of mine, and I think we have about 70 waifu, different waifus in the freaking folder that I created so far. In the Cold Steel games, you have certain dating elements where you can pursue these waifus. These are not present in the Trails in the Sky games, but there definitely is still romance and comedy and a lot of different good aspects to it. Um, For this particular title, even though it's part of the Sky series, it doesn't focus on Estelle. Instead, the main character is Father Kevin and his partner, Rias Argent who is a childhood friend of his. They work for the church. And what happens is they collect an artifact which sends them to this otherworldly realm called Phantasma. And they have to explore Phantasma, figure out why they're there, figure out if there's a way to get back to their normal world, the continent or world of Zamoria. Specifically, their continent that they're from is Liberal. And along the way in being in this Phantasma, which is a different realm, they come across a lot of their friends and they start to wonder, how did our friends get here if they were nowhere near us or the artifact that transported us here? So there's a lot of mystery involved and it's definitely a very fun game. I believe I read at some point some misinformation about the game. Somebody said that it was not canon and that you don't have to play it. The game is, in fact, a canon part of the series. Some of the other Trails games make references to events that happen in this game. And the game also has these doors that can unlock, and the doors give a lot of background into the Trails in the Sky characters. So if you want to see more like character development or learn more about the characters that appear in the series, it's very good in that regard. So there's, it's, it's like a hidden gem. First of all, the entire Trail series is a hidden gem. It's up there with Final Fantasy and Persona and Dragon Quest in terms of likability. Personally, it's my favorite RPG series, which is why you hear me talking about it more than a lot of these other games that I've talked about. I think it deserves a lot more attention. But yeah, I'm going to give this one an S tier. Obviously, somewhat biased since I'm like the number one of the number one Trails fans, but... Excellent series overall. Anyone who likes turn-based games will enjoy it. Anyone who likes games with strong stories will enjoy it. If you want a game with waifus, you might enjoy it. There's a lot of promise to be had. The next game that we have here, I believe, is like somewhat of a free demo at this point because I have looked at the Kickstarter for the game. It's called Unbeatable. White Label. And according to the Kickstarter, the game doesn't release until 2023, 2023. So right now, the demo version that's available on Steam has 12 songs. It's a rhythm game. Each song has five different levels of difficulty. Beginner, easy, normal, hard, and unbeatable. The gameplay itself reminds a lot of people of Muse Dash. So if you're a Muse Dash fan... Go download that unbeatable demo. You'll have a lot of fun with it. The art style reminds me a lot of The World Ends With You for some reason in some ways. I don't know why. It just gives me this twee-wee vibe. I had a lot of fun. I'm not really a big rhythm game fan, but I had a lot of fun with the game. I tried the songs on Beginner, Easy, and Normal. 
that's about the best I can do. I definitely can't take hard or unbeatable, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the full game is like. I've made a YouTube video of this as well, so the YouTube video itself in the description has a link to the Kickstarter. So feel free to go look at that YouTube video if you want to go support the game and get extra content for when the game rele releases. As far as rhythm games go, I'll give it an S tier, because again, I've played other rhythm games and I think this one was easily probably the most enjoyable one I've played or one of the most enjoyable so very promising title the songs are also very catchy one of my friends streamed the game as well and she was stuck on a song and the song ended up getting hooked in my memory but yeah definitely a fun game to try out all right the next game on my list is Valkyrie Drive Valkyrie Drive is also on PlayStation Vita it is basically Senra and Kagura so, I'll be honest, the plot is not very interesting for me personally, but, and you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, like I know people buy these games specifically for the fan service, but when I buy them, I kind of do hope that the plot is somewhat more interesting. So, I'm going to be honest, story mode, not that great. Um, the gameplay itself for this game was very fun. The gameplay felt more interesting than Senra and Kagura. The only problem was that it, the game was kind of bugged. So there was a certain mission where the game kept crashing at a certain part of the mission. So I had to refund the game. But if anyone has a PlayStation Vita and likes games like Senra and Kagura, I recommend trying to purchase it for the Vita because it may be playable and fun on that system. I have heard from other reviewers of the game that they kind of got bored of it maybe because of the story maybe because of the gameplay they said it wasn't really worth the price that they paid but you know if you're the type of person that you just want fan service or to see like maybe a little bit of yuri because it is so there is some waifu and waifu stuff going on here then it might be up your alley for me personally bugs aside just my general impressions of like the story and the gameplay, I would give it a C tier. The next game is Yomawari. I played Midnight Shadows, I believe, on PlayStation 4, but I played Night Alone on Steam. So I'm going to only talk about Night Alone. To be honest, I didn't get very far. This was another game that was bugged and kept crashing like in the first chapter, I believe, pretty much. So I had to, I don't even think I got to refund it. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I don't know if I knew about refunds back then. But yeah, the game kept crashing. Maybe I could like complain and get them to patch it. Because I think I actually do still have the game. But the speaking from my Midnight Shadows experience on PS4, the art style is very unique and cute and interesting. The gameplay is very fun. One of my viewers wanted me to stream night alone after seeing me watch play after seeing me play midnight shadows so it's definitely the type of game that would not only engage the player but engage anyone else who's watching i believe and it's definitely worth giving a shot when i bought them i think i got them on sale for about four bucks or so very cheap so you can't go wrong for the price they're supposed to be horror games, but since they're so cartoonish and everything, I don't think they're really going to give anyone a scare. But they will have you sitting on the edge of your seat, I suppose, since you don't want to die and you never know what's going to kill you. I would give it an A tier. I can't say why I'm not giving it the S, because I'm not really sure, but I'm sure it is just something that could be a little bit better, maybe. Very good, but I don't know if I would give it the S tier. My next game is Yeast 6, The Ark of Nephistim. At the In this game, you play as Adol Christian. He's an adventurer. At the start of the game, your ship pretty much sinks because of... I believe it's a whirlpool, but it might have also been like a storm. And you end up waking up on a beach. You don't know where your friends are. You don't know how you survived. And two elf girls, who are sisters, find you and take you back to their elf village. Heal you, let you rest. 
And you wake up and you find out that that village of elves, they don't really like humans. Because humans have treated them somewhat poorly. There are even some humans that would try to enslave the elves if possible. Um, so... The two elf girls that healed you and took care of you are very kind. But everyone else is kind of suspicious of you at first. There's some animosity. And, you know, you just go around doing your adventure things. I can't say too much because I'll start to spoil it since, f considering it's an RPG, it feels a little bit light on, like, the dialogue and the story and bigger on, like, the battle and exploration. But... It's a very fun game. The hitboxes in this game were very awkward. It was hard to tell the right spot to hit enemies. In some cases, enemies were very overpowered unless you grinded for a bit. So it is a grindy game. I think, though, that in terms of gameplay, it's not turn-based. You kind of run around and swing your sword. So I guess it's like almost hack and slash, but not really. But I think the exploration is very fun. There's a lot of backtracking because you have to get items and then think to yourself, oh, I think this item would work in this spot. Or, oh, I think I have to give this item to that person. And you can level up your armors and equip and assault weapons. You could, like, sort of forge them with synthesis materials of sorts. Very fun. The story was excellent. The gameplay battle mechanics are very good, despite the hitbox issues and all that. For me, personally, it's not like my top three Yeast games. But I think I would give it like a strong A. Because of the hitbox issues and all that, I can't give it an S, but it's a strong A. Olha, the light blue-haired fairy girl, also is like the top waifu in Yeast for me. I'm just saying that. But yeah, Yeast, amazing franchise our next game is actually two in one yeast chronicles which is available on steam and also available on psp contains both yeast one and yeast two you could get the game on sale on steam often for five dollars if not if you want it on psp it's very expensive unfortunately but yeast one and yeast two are a little bit odd because it has a what they call a bump system, where instead of just swinging your sword to attack an enemy, you sort of have to walk into them, or bump them, and you have to bump them either from the side or the back, because if you bump them straight on, you will damage them, but they'll also damage you, and it often feels like they deal heavier damage to you than you deal to them. So you want to attack them from certain angles, and you have to be very careful about that. Some of them tend to like turn around or move very quickly um there's also a lot of like backtracking in this game figuring out what item goes where where to go next personally i don't like playing games using a guide so for me it's the type of game where at some points it's easy to get lost but even though i got lost i wanted to you know push on ahead and keep exploring and grinding and, you know, just have a good time and finish the game, see how the story develops. Uh, I don't think it's, like, a good Yeast game to start with if you want to get hooked into the series. I think games like Yeast 8 on PlayStation 4 or Yeast 9, which recently came out, are better. And then if you feel that you really like the Yeast games, then you might want to try these older titles and see how you like them. But for me personally, the gameplay was great. I got really lost at one point in East 1, and I stopped playing for several months. But then I came back and got to the end of the game. East 2 was very similar with the same bump system. And the same whole, like, getting items, backtracking, getting lost. Uh, they're both pretty short games, though. They can be finished within, like, less than 5 hours if you're trying to, like, speedrun or anything. But if you're not speedrunning, they might take you within the realm of, like, 10 to 15 hours each. If you're, like, grinding and getting lost. Uh, definitely some more waifu characters in these games as well. A lot of fun. I would also give this an A tier, but, like, a weak A tier, maybe. So, not definitely not as strong as E6 for me, but still very fun games. And our last game is E3 to Ophenfelgana. I have this game, 
Oh wait, I don't. I was gonna say I have it on PSP, but I don't. I was gonna buy the collector's edition on PSP at one point, but I only have it on Steam right now. I got it for on sale for five bucks. Um, Yeast Three uh, is a remake, first of all. Uh, it, it plays a lot like Yeast Six, the Ark of Nephi's theme, because those games, like all the Yeast games, Yeast One through Nine and Yeast Origins, kind of have a chronological order, world building, for the most part, all feature Adol Christian. Uh, but even though all the games go together, Yeast 3, Yeast 6, and Yeast Origins in particular go together especially well in terms of the combat styles and everything that's going on, and also in some t cases the story, because I know there are some references to... I believe Yeast 3 and Yeast 6 and all that. So, gameplay-wise, it plays a lot like Yeast 6, where you're running around, and some parts might be grindy, you're swinging your sword, you might get some magic abilities, yada yada. Um, the hitboxes were improved in this one, it's a lot more of a smoother game. The exploration is also a little bit more fun, like some of the dungeons just feel more interesting to explore. Um, the plot is that you go back to a certain island with your friend Dogi, and it's his, the island where he was raised, called Felgana. And a lot of strange things are going on in Felgana. A lot of monsters are appearing more often and attacking villages. One of Dogi's childhood friends has become a knight and is working for... This king who appears to be a bad guy with high taxes and doing other bad things. Um, and you definitely uncover a lot of mysteries regarding, first of all, like the intentions of that king guy and Dogi's childhood friend, the knight. But also be mysteries beyond the characters and their intentions, specifically relating to like the ancient lore of the story and things that happened in the distant past. You know, ancient monsters and legendary heroes and all of that good stuff. Again, I think the story and gameplay of these East games and Falcom games in general is absolutely amazing. I hate the fact that they're hidden gems and not more people know about them. I think this one is either on par or maybe a little bit stronger than East 6. So I would say it's another A tier game. I know that it might seem odd that there are no S-tier Yeast games in here, but that's because, like, my S-tier Yeast game would be Yeast 8, which I have on PS4, so I talked about that in a PS4 tier maker. But these ones that I've played on Steam are all A-tier. Very good, for sure. I guess that's it for our tier maker, guys. I'm s if you guys enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe for more videos like this.